The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everybody and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jason Hollis, Head of Product at Reckon, and today we'll be introducing Zapier, an online automation tool for Reckon One. Now before we start today's presentation, we just want to go through a little bit of housekeeping. We are in listen-only mode for this webinar, which means you can't ask questions through the webinar. However, if you use the chat dialog box uh, on the GoToWebinar toolbar, you'll be able to leave questions for us as we go through the webinar. And Victoria is in Reckon HQ at the moment, and Victoria will take us through the questions at the end where I'll answer them. So please feel free to enter your questions in there as we go. Today in this webinar, we'll run through what is Zapier and how it can help your business. Many of you may not have heard uh, Zapier before, or you've heard of Zapier and not sure exactly what it does, so today we'll go through in a little bit more detail just so you understand uh, the high-level concepts of Zapier and what all the fuss is about. Now, we actually use Zapier in our own business at Reckon. We currently push uh, things like online API registrations through to our CRM all using Zapier, and we also give ourselves a notification through our communication channel when new applications come through. Uh, you'll see how all of that works a little bit later when we get into uh, having a look at zaps, triggers and actions. Uh, and then finally we'll finish off with a demonstration of Reckon One and Zapier. I'll uh, give you a few examples, uh, go through some use cases and see how it all works together. Okay, so what is Zapier? Uh, first and foremost, let's have a look at the name Zapier. Uh, it is pronounced Zapier, not Zapier. That's a holiday destination in South Africa, I believe. Uh, and the way to remember it is it rhymes with happier. Uh, it makes you happier when you use it. it makes your life a lot easier. Uh, the official explanation from the good people of Zapier is that Zapier is a tool that allows you to connect apps that you use every day to automate tasks and save time. Uh, with Zapier's library of over 1,200 apps, uh, you can connect your tool to other business apps to create automated workflows. And that's the key uh, to Zapier is connecting lots of different apps together in ways that you could never imagine before. And you also have some control over that uh, to produce the workflows you need for your particular circumstance. As you can see from this graphical representation, it's not about connecting a heap of apps just to reckon one or to one single app, but connecting multiple apps to multiple apps. So that essentially means that the connections, the possibilities uh, are almost uh, infinite. So how is this helpful? Uh, going back to day dot, the problem with uh, connecting different software together has always been that accounting program A uh, doesn't talk to accounting program B. Uh, perhaps they're written in different languages, uh, although we can bring that down to a common language these days. But the main reason is the semantics, so the meaning behind uh, the data. So accounting product A may have a data field called account name, and CRM B might have that same field actually called account name. But they could mean two totally different things in the context of that application. So that if you link account, account name uh, from the accounting software to the account name of the CRM, you may be pushing data in the, um, the completely different uh, wrong areas. And importantly too, is you don't always get direct connections between all software. Uh, obviously Reckon One doesn't integrate with every app out there uh, that's ever been written. Uh, the CRM tool doesn't integrate with every app. And Zapier helps bring those apps together. So firstly, it lets you decide what field in accounting product A means um, in CRM product B. So what are you going to, to connect together to make sense to you as the business owner? or as the advisor, and it allows you to connect apps that aren't connected directly. Uh, so in the Zapier ecosystem, as we've seen, there's over 1,200 apps, and we'll have a look at those a little bit later. But there's also a great deal of what we would call niche apps. So apps that are never going to connect in uh, to Reckon One, for example. And again, using Zapier, you can connect some of these really nice niche tools, either directly to Reckon One or in a workflow sequence again to uh, make sense to your own business case and to aid in efficiency uh, where needed. 
automation is key to Zapier's principles. Uh, as we say here, you can automate manual tasks, so tasks that you're actually doing uh, manually at the moment, such as keying in data. So maybe you're getting sales in an e-commerce store like Shopify or WooCommerce, and then you're manually keying them into your accounting software. Additionally, uh, it automates uh, your workflow. So at the moment, maybe you have to do three different things uh, when you enter a sale in Shopify. Uh, maybe you have to contact app over here to tell the sales gone through. Maybe you've got a delivery app uh, that you have to trigger off the delivery of the goods, etc., etc. So we can automate all that with Zapier and all of those instructions get sent out at the time uh, the transaction was created, for example. And you can also automate uh, notifications. So at the moment you may have to manually go and search to see if an invoice has been paid, for example. With Zapier, uh, you can automate a notification to come through to your preferred uh, communication channel such as Slack or Gmail, for example. And finally, innovation. So Zapier is built for businesses primarily. You don't need developer skills, although if you do, you can definitely take Zapier to the next level and start coding uh, some nice automation bits and pieces. However, being built for businesses means uh, you already have a good understanding of the products that you're using. So using that understanding, you can map one product to the other and get the data flow uh, working exactly as you want it. Now the customization of workflows is also key. Uh, as we'll see a little bit later, you can design uh, the triggers and actions any way you want to get the exact data that you want and uh, no more data. Uh, a good example of that is Reckon 1's integration to TidyStock, a very nice tight integration uh, with TidyStock uh, inventory management software. However, it's very rigid. Uh, the TidyStock guys developed it to work in a certain way and you can't go outside of those boundaries. Uh, with Zapier, you don't have to push all the data through uh, that the developers are telling you to push through. You can push through just the data uh, you need and again, in any way that you want. So let's start to cover how Zapier works exactly. Uh, to understand Zapier a little bit more, uh, it's good to understand their key uh, terms. And these include Zap, uh, a trigger, action, uh, and a task. So what is a Zap? Uh, firstly, it's important to know that it's not a verb, it's an actual noun, so it's a thing. And a good example of uh, what a Zap might be is your uh, Salesforce app creates a contact and when that lead becomes an actual uh, account, you might want to create that account in Reckon 1 for that customer. Now, if you wanted to, that is one zap. If you wanted to move those same Salesforce contacts to a MailChimp list at the same time, that's a second zap. So it's a thing that contains um, triggers and actions essentially. So we've talked about triggers and actions already a little bit. Uh, so what is a trigger? So it triggers the event that starts the zap. For example, if you want to automate creating a receipt in Reckon 1 every time you receive a payment in Stripe, then new Stripe payment is the trigger. It's what triggers the whole process. It, it's what gives the signal that, yes, I'm going to um, start this zap off. Uh, an action is an event that the zap performs. So after the trigger, the trigger must always go first, uh, you will have one or many actions. So for example, that receipt that you've created in Reckon 1, um, when the payment comes into Stripe, create Reckon 1 receipt is the action. So it's what happens after the trigger. And as I said, you can have multiple actions as they have here in this example uh, with Gmail, they have an action to copy the attachment to Dropbox and an action to alert uh, the user in Slack that the drop about the Dropbox file. Now, task is a single action performed by Zapier. So what I mean by that is uh, if your Zap is to create new Google contacts uh, every time a contact is created, that is a task. And it's important when choosing uh, your Zapier plan uh, because different plans have different limits on Zap on Zaps. Now, Reckon 1 is a free plan to begin with. Uh, we're not a premium app. We did all the work in, in Zapier ourselves. Uh, and there's no restrictions around what you can create in terms of integrations into Reckon 1. 
However, there are limitations around the number of tasks you can do a month um, and the amount of actions uh, you can have, for example. And we'll go into that a little bit more later. How does Zapier really work though? So obviously uh, we're not using smoke and mirrors here. There is actual code working pretty hard in the background to achieve uh, what's being achieved between Reckon 1 and Zapier or Zapier and the, the rest of the ecosystem. Uh, and in a nutshell, it's APIs. So an API simply is an interface that a computer uses rather than a human. Uh, and it allows one pro program to talk to another program. Now, as I mentioned before, uh, an API, or as I mentioned before, uh, we can get down to a common language between programs and an API is what handles that common language. Uh, it has a set of instructions on how program A talks to program B. That said, Zapier allows uh, the Reckon 1 team, so our developer team, to not really care um, about other apps in the Zapier ecosystem. Uh, we only need to worry about Reckon. So what that means for us is we don't have to go out to other applications and learn their APIs. We only have to learn Zapier's, which as you can imagine is a lot simpler because all of the other apps in Zapier's ecosystem don't need to learn the Reckon 1 API. They just need to learn Zapier's and they just need to learn it once. So we don't have to repeat steps for every app we integrate with. We only uh, do the steps once to integrate with Zapier. And that's really helpful because uh, for newish apps like Reckon 1 when we started out, uh, startups in particular will go and integrate with apps uh, that are probably the largest uh, in their ecosystem, rightly so, to get the, the most number of users as quick as they can. So when you're starting out with an app like we were with Reckon 1, it's really hard to get uh, integrations with some of these apps. And some of the bigger guys, they'll never integrate with you, so you need to integrate with them. So rather than Reckon going out and integrating with all these different apps, uh, the better option for us was to integrate with Zapier, as I said, to get all of those efficiencies, uh, standardize our integration somewhat, and then of course we get um, instant integration to 1200 apps. So here's a really high level view of what's going on. On the right you've got your app like Reckon 1, uh, could be viewable on a smart device or a computer, and it's sending data in this example over to Microsoft. So it goes through an API uh, to standardize the language, standardize the call, because Microsoft will tell us what instructions it needs and we need to interpret those. And then we're telling Microsoft a whole heap of methods. So post, get, put, or delete, for example. So if we want to post data to Microsoft, we're adding data, uh, and that's called a method. If we want to get data back, then that's the get. And as you can see here, the language is quite simple. So uh, in a text format, this is using JSON, J-S-O-N. Uh, older standards include XML, which you may have heard of. This is how we send the raw data. Uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, something like name in Reckon 1 uh, may not mean the same thing in Microsoft in terms of name. And that's what Zapier, Zapier assists uh, with the mapping of. Now, although this language looks quite simple, we still don't know uh, what Microsoft means. So to combat this, when we replace Microsoft with Zapier, again, we only need to understand the methods. So how to post something to Zapier, we only have to understand that once. Uh, so our app's on the right, and now we're just sending uh, the methods to Zapier. And what that means is Zapier interprets uh, that transaction, so that language, and now Reckon 1 can talk to Microsoft or any other 1200 apps in the Zapier ecosystem. So what we really mean here is Zapier takes the data and matches the same thing in both apps, even though they may have the same name or totally different terminology. It's not really two different languages, but more like Zapier explaining slang from New Zealand to someone in the UK or Australia. So let's dive in and have a look at Zapier in action. So the Zapier web address is zapier.com. And the first thing you'll need to do to connect apps together is create an account. However, you can just log in and have a look around Zapier and see if the apps in there uh, suit your business. So click on apps. And we can have a look at what sort of apps are available. It's a really nice layout. 
nice design and pretty easy to find things. So if you know the name of your app, you can just type that in. Or you can look at certain categories. So if we go to the accounting category, you'll see there's premium apps there, which means you pay to use them. Uh, they're built by Zapier themselves. Or you can see others down here like Reckon One, which are free to use. So as you can see in the accountants category alone, there's many, many apps. So if you know the name of the app, just type it in and it, it will come up. If it doesn't come up, Zapier doesn't support that app. So here Zapier will give you some hints and tips uh, around what they recommend you could start on. So Reckon One to Gmail, uh, Reckon to Shopify, so the popular, most popular Reckon integrations. Or we've created some templates here to help get you on the way with some of our most popular integrations. Uh, we'll build them up over time uh, as Zapier is used more and, and when we understand uh, what customers are using the most. So the predefined templates will just help you uh, not have to map them yourselves and it'll use our recommendation and we'll go through that shortly. So what we'll do is jump into a new account that I've created, not an existing account, and once we've signed up, it'll just give us an idea of the most popular zaps in the market that people are using. Uh, Trello is like a task management tool that some of you may have heard of. That's one of their most popular integration tools, as is Google Sheets and Google Mail, as you can see there. So straight from this interface, we can do a quick setup so we've created our account and let's just search for Reckon, select Reckon 1 and to integrate with, uh, let's use this example, my wife pays all of our bills for our business out of Reckon 1 uh, and just so I can be across those payments uh, to ensure we're not paying the wrong people or so I know when an account's been paid so maybe I'm waiting for one to be paid before I can go and pick up some materials uh, I'll integrate that with Gmail. So this will show you what triggers are available between Reckon 1 and Gmail. So new payment is down there in Reckon 1. As you can see we have new contacts, new invoices, new customer adjustment note for example. And when I get a new payment what do I want to do? I can create a draft email or I want to send an email in this case. And then create make a zap. Now this will take us through to the Zapier wizard and you can see there we selected new payment in Reckon 1 as the trigger and it's already added the action there. At this point it's a bit light on detail and we need to go and complete. So the first thing we're going to do is name our zap just so you can find it. It's really helpful if you have multiple zaps and something that makes sense so R1 payments to Gmail. We have about 60 zaps at Reckon, so as I said, it does help uh, when you're sorting through your apps. When I click connect to my account, you'll go to the Reckon Identity Server now, and it'll ask you to authorize the connection to Zapier. Now, I've already integrated that previously, so the Reckon 1 account just comes up here. Now, just make sure when you are authorizing Reckon 1 to Zapier, Use the username that you do use to log into Reckon 1. Now, if you use Gmail or the Office login, now the Microsoft Office, use that login method. So it must match the one that you use to log into Reckon 1. And you, of course, must be authorized to use that account. Now, we're just testing here to make sure that uh, we're still connected to that account. And you can also rename your Reckon 1 account just so you can understand uh, what that account might be or which which account that may belong to. So if you're an advisor, for example, you could add in your client's name here. Save and continue that. Zapier now steps us through uh, the next step, which is selecting our book. So under Jason Hollis's account, uh, this will show the book's link to Jason Hollis. It's looking for the choices. And here's the various different books uh, that Jason Hollis owns. 
and we're going to use CSV test today. Continue through. And this is really helpful uh, to pull through data that you do need. Uh, it just helps you map the data to Reckon 1. So sometimes the fields in Reckon 1 to the app that you're connecting to uh, aren't obvious and don't make sense. So pulling through samples is really helpful to give you an understanding uh, of the data that's um, coming through. So we're just going to pull through some samples now. This is going away to Reckon 1 and looking at examples of a new payment. So let's have a look at these. You want to use one that's going to make the most sense to you. That's just an automated payment from Stripe. So we'll have a look at sample B and see what it's giving us. And there's a fictitious payment to my contact for $2.69. So let's use that one there. Continue on. Now at this point we can change what app we're integrating with, but we'll stay with Gmail. And again, we can change uh, the action there, but we're going to send the email. Now let's choose our Gmail account. So I shouldn't have one already created here. So we should go away to the, the Google identity server, which we've done here. Uh, again, it's asking what account I want to connect to, and that's the right one there. When selected, again, just says that Zapier wants to get access to your Google account. Are you okay with that? If you're not okay with it, uh, Zapier is probably not a good tool for you because you do obviously need to authorize the integration between the two, uh, as you would if Reckon was directly integrating with Google itself. You'd have to authorize uh, Reckon to integrate with your Google data. Once you've read through the terms and conditions, as I'm sure we all do, uh, click Allow, and that authorizes our account. Again, you can rename it here, but that's pretty self-explanatory the name of that account, and we can just test to make sure it's still active, which it is, and then continue through to the next step. So here we're going to set up our template. So this is where we map the fields uh, from one application to the other. Now some of these aren't going to be found in Reckon 1, and you can just hard code them uh, with text into the template. So for example, who do I want to send this to? Uh, I want to send it to the owner of the business, which in this case is me. So I'll type in my Gmail address if I can remember it correctly. Courtesy copy, or if you're old school, carbon copy, you can enter in there. Uh, maybe you want the, to that to go back to your bookkeeper or your partner who's doing the payments. And who's this from? So we can uh, map that from any address, but in this case, I'm just going to uh, use my own. You can mask it. Uh, with a different address so that when uh, the recipient responds, it can go back to that uh, master address. I can enter a name there if I like, etc, etc. And again, these are specific to Gmail. Now in the subject, because this is an email, well, it's got a subject line. And this is where we can see some of the mapping on the power of Zapier coming through. So if I drop this down, we can actually see some of the pre-filled uh, fields as I said, uh, with some sample data in there. And it really helps us um, kind of understand what, what the data field uh, is telling us. So there's no ambiguity. So I'm just going to type in here for my subject line, payment to, and select my contact. So the business I paid, or we paid as a business, and four, and then I'll go and pull through, uh, sorry, I'll change that to on. So I might want to enter the date in there. So I'll change that to on and pick a transaction date. Now again, computers aren't perfect. So this is UTC time. It's not going to look uh, nice and perfect like a short date. And as you can see down here in the body of the text, or the body of the email, we can enter plain or HTML depending on your coding skills. HTML is quite easy. I would uh, highly recommend it, but I'll just enter in some plain text here. So we paid and again, I'll pull through my contact on and I'll go and grab that unattractive UTC date and now let's enter in the amount. Now Reckon's just going to show the amount uh, as an integer of course. I could add a dollar sign uh, if I liked and I'll just enter in the payment method so I know uh, 
how we paid for that. Now I can, Google obviously has uh, labels, so I can label that if I like, um, or I can add a certain attachment here. So again, good use cases, I might want to attach terms and conditions every time I send out um, an invoice, for example. And here's an example of the data, just so I can check it again to make sure it's going in the right spots. But the best way to test uh, is actually send that data through, uh, which we'll do now. So you'll see, um, this is all the fields that we recommend for this particular integration. Uh, there's some empty fields there that I didn't bother to fill out. Um, and you might also find fields in there that uh, we don't recommend using. So just showing the bottom of the text and again we've just got it as the integer, we haven't used the dollar sign uh, which we could use. So let's send that test through to Gmail and we should get a successful response, fingers crossed. So a test email was sent to Gmail and if we drag over our Gmail account. And refresh the inbox. Uh, we should see that email in the inbox. And here it is. So as we entered, we paid my contact on that date for $2.69 using BPay. So let's just finish that template and our zap's ready to turn on. So the zap won't actually work until you've activated it and uh, the plan where on the zap uh, fires off every 15 minutes. And there we go. So as we mentioned before, you can create your own uh, zaps from scratch or we provide some templates so let's go again and search for Reckon 1 and you'll notice on the Reckon 1 page here as we saw before there's some templates that we've created ourselves we have around 14 at the moment but we'll build those out again as we start seeing a pattern for what end users are putting together and this one's to create Reckon 1 sales receipts uh, for every time Stripe gets a new charge. So a good example of that is you work at a market stall, uh, you want to take FPOS but you don't want to lug around an FPOS terminal, so you use Stripe on your phone and every time you enter in a payment, uh, that payment will come through uh, to Reckon 1, depending on the plan you're on, whether it could be instant every five minutes or we're on the free forever plan, so ours are going to come through every 15 minutes, which is uh, generally fine uh, for most people. So we see here how the integration works. So a new charge is made in Stripe and then Zapier creates a receipt, uh, a money in transaction, we call it in Reckon 1. And that will happen every time you get that charge in Stripe. So we can view more details or let's use this Zap. So when we click here, uh, this will come through and create the template for us. Just asking us here if we wanna use our existing account, which I do, or we can do this in another account. So let's continue through. And again, here is the trigger. So we've already selected new charge, so it's only going to show us that option for Stripe. Again, we can rename our Stripe account. That's the one we're going to use today. I always recommend uh, giving it a test to make sure uh, that that account is still connected. So let's do that. And that's successful. So let's continue through. Now there's some um, initial parameters here that developers can add into their apps. So do you want this to come through for all Stripe actions or only when Stripe creates a new charge, which is what we want? So as we did with the, the first example, we're going to pull through uh, some examples here. And here's some sample data that's already sitting in Stripe. And we're just going to use that uh, for our test. Let's have a look at sample B. Yeah, that data is a little bit better, so we might use that. Continue through. Again, we're using a template here, so it's only giving us the create receipt option. 
If we were doing this from scratch, we'd see all of the Reckon 1 options. This creates a new money in receipt uh, with the optional ability to assign a receipt to an existing invoice. That's a little bit more technical. We're not going to go into that today, but you can certainly assign a charge payment uh, to an invoice if it exists. Generally, uh, if you're working in the market stall environment, you won't have an invoice. Uh, you'll just have the receipt uh, that you want to create after the sale. So again, it's asking us what Reckon 1 account we want to use. So remember, this isn't the book. This is the account that the books belong to. You may have one book or you may have many books under that account. We'll test that again just to make sure it's still connected. That's been successful, so we'll save and continue. Okay, again, we select what books uh, we want to connect this to, or what book, sorry. You can only obviously connect to one book at a time. I'm going to use CSV, uh, CSV test again. And as you can see, the data's already been pre populated there. So the data fields. So the transaction date, we've already selected that. Contact, we can't pre-select because we don't know what's available in the book. We can pull that through, for example, from the data that's in Stripe. Now, it's really important to make sure that this customer already exists. Um, it's not mandatory in Stripe to enter a customer. So what I'm going to do here is hard code it because as you can see, uh, it is a required field in Reckon 1. Now, obviously, you need to make sure that the contact stripe already exists in Reckon 1 before you do that. Same with bank account. You can't really pull it through from uh, Stripe. So we need to go into our Reckon 1 book and look at the names of our bank accounts. I'm going to enter cash because I know cash is a default bank account in Reckon 1. Total payment amount is pre-filled. Uh, whether I want to allocate the full amount, yes. Again, that's probably a question that not all end users will really understand. Uh, we've tried to help you out there by saying this is where no invoice exists. Um, and again, accounts receivable, we've pre-filled that as well. That's a default receivables account in Reckon 1. And Reckon 1, of course, uses a receivables account, uh, even if this isn't an invoice. I'll enter sales there for the account name of the general ledger account that I want this to go to. Again, that account must exist in Reckon 1. And for the description, I'll just pick something here from Stripe uh, that's going to make sense. So this is at the line level, so it's where we want this to come through. So I've entered the statement descriptor. We also have an option there saying there's some extra fields available. They don't seem to be used and we can remove them or just not worry about it. So again, there's the sample data. We can quickly look through that and make sure we're okay with it. And there's all the different fields that uh, we didn't use and you didn't see those because on the template, uh, we've already said, don't use these fields. So let's send that test to Reckon 1. And we'll wait to see if that was successful. Uh, test receipt was sent to Reckon 1 just now. So let's look at our Reckon 1 book. And if we go to our Receive Money page and refresh that page, you'll see the sale there, Pies and Sauce. Uh, if you remember the date was the 9th of the 10th and that's the transaction. And we can go in here and the details pull through with Pies and Source and you might remember we selected that line description, J line description Jason's order. Now we don't bring through any tax at this point. Uh, that is a limitation of Stripe. They only deal in net uh, sales. So that's a bit of a limitation there. So you only just have to go through here and enter in um, the right tax code. Other apps, for example, uh, like Shopify, they do have a concept of tax code, so you can map those through automatically. So we've also set up some previous uh, zaps for this account. And one of those zaps was create the Stripe fee every time uh, there's a payment 
So we'll go and have a look at an example, one of these. Uh, on the 5th of September, there was a Stripe payment. And you can see here that we've set up a ZAP to automatically assign uh, the bank fees. Now we know the tax code is always going to be NCG for the Stripe fees, so we can hard code that in. So again, really looking at those efficiency gains um, to create the charges for you, so we don't uh, have to manually enter it or even think about it. Now let's have a look at the Zapier management functionality. We've got our Zapier uh, homepage here. This is our Reckon account. And in our home area, you will see uh, the quick setup that we saw before, uh, the popular Zaps uh, for the apps that I have in our uh, ecosystem. Uh, and we can also look at all the zaps that we have set up uh, in our zap testing area. Uh, this is our testing folder, so you can sort your zaps out into different folders. You can see the ones which are active, uh, which ones are turned off for now. Uh, over here, we have our task history, and this shows that I had a failure um, on our customer ID, it looks like there. So I will say I prepared this one earlier. I actually didn't. Uh, so we need to go back and check that template and find out why we didn't have a contact name against it because it's saying that that contact didn't exist and we can replay that as well. Now here's all our uh, connected accounts so multiple Reckon accounts again this is our testing area so Paul one of our developers there Simon Hutchinson one of our product managers so various different um, applications that we test against uh, to make sure our templates work and then of course uh, some of the apps in there that we use uh, internally at Reckon. So Victoria we're probably right for questions now uh, if you're there so if anyone's had questions throughout the webinar and jotted them into the chat area uh, we'll read those out if not um, please add them in now. Hi Jason can you hear me? Yes. Okay great. First question with Stripe does it do the individual transactions in Stripe or the total amount transferred to bank? Uh, currently, Stripe doesn't have a trigger for bulk settlements, probably to do with the fact that it's an authoriser, uh, doesn't actually settle the funds, which is uh, the bank's responsibility. Uh, so it only triggers on such things as new customer or new charges. So what we'd suggest is putting that to a bank account called Stripe in Reckon One. So you send all the individual transactions there and then transfer the settlement amount into your actual bank account as it would happen um, with Stripe transferring the settlement to your bank account and then when you reconcile your bank account you just reconcile one bulk amount. Okay thank you Jason. Do you have links to B point? So the easiest way to find out if an app is in the Zapier ecosystem is go to zapier.com and search for that app. Now I know that B point isn't in there and it's important to point out at the moment that uh, the app must act actively engage with Zapier uh, to become part of the Zapier ecosystem. So it seems that Bpoint has not done that. Uh, if they're a very large app, such as Salesforce, then Zapier might do the work themselves. Um, so you can always contact Zapier and say, hey, what about this app, Bpoint, and also contact Bpoint themselves. Of course, if the app wants to remain competitive in today's environment, uh, it's important for companies to look at tools like Zapier uh, so they are part of that ecosystem and part of the conversation for the customer. If you're already using Bpoint, we'd never suggest uh, leaving um, an app. Um, however, look at the other alternatives, reach out and contact Bpoint because uh, at the end of the day, it is making your life easier if you can get an integration uh, with your accounting application. Okay, there's a few more questions come through. Is it free for end customers? Okay, thanks Victoria. It might be a good time to go through the pricing model now. So here we have our Reckon add-on marketplace. You see the URL at the top of the screen there. And on our marketplace, we have a special landing page for Zapier. Um, now you'll see here that uh, Reckon is free to use forever. So what that really means is you'll receive 100 free tasks per month. And we've gone over what tasks mean and five free connections also known as Zaps. Uh, now, Reckon is also free forever because we did all of the development work. The development work wasn't done by Zapier. Um, so we can offer full flexibility and also uh, offer Reckon 1 as a free app rather than a premium app if Zapier 
uh, does the integration work. Now if we go over to uh, Zapier's pricing page, you'll see here that the Free Forever allows you to make two-step apps, so a trigger and then into an action, and full support from their support team, which is great, and connect to all the apps that are available. Now if you do have a premium app, you'll have to move to another plan, so here is their pricing plan uh, in US dollars, so $20 a month US for the starter plan gets you 20 at a time and a thousand tasks per month also gives you access to all of the premium apps and multi-steps as well. So that's actually the plan that we use at Reckon uh, and the zaps run every 15 minutes which is fine for us. As you move up through the plan you'll see that the zaps run more often and you can set up pathways for example and you get more tasks per month and you can set up more zaps. Again we personally would look at how many you need to use so start off small uh, it's all about automation, so everything that you automate should make sense and obviously uh, there should be a cost benefit to doing so. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question, are you doing this for Reckon Hosted? Uh, that's a very relevant question, Victoria, because uh, next week we're actually kicking off a discussion internally around integrating Reckon Accounts Hosted to Zapier. Uh, when we looked at Zapier originally for Reckon 1, we did feel that Hosted could possibly integrate with Zapier. However, the API, which we discussed earlier, uh, is a completely different technology to that of Reckon 1 and, in fact, Zapier. Uh, and we just need to make sure that if we do integrate the products, that the user doesn't have a negative experience. So, as I said, we're kicking that off next week. So, good news uh, for Zapier fans is that our new POS program, Reckon Cloud POS, will be integrating with Zapier next year as will our new practice management system, Better Clinics. Now, if you haven't heard of Better Clinics, it's a new product in the Reckon Stable, uh, practice management for physios, chiropractors, psychologists, trainers, that sort of thing. So we've kind of spread the word within Reckon uh, that Zapier is the way to go, and all the teams are excited about integrating with Zapier. So we will integrate Zapier with other Reckon tools where we can. Thank you. Have you done any integration with WooCommerce? I personally haven't integrated with WooCommerce, primarily just because it's a little bit tricky to set up and you need the integration with WordPress, for example. But it is available on Zapier. Once you have a WooCommerce account, uh, it's a pretty simple process of just going through and mapping the data fields uh, to what's available in Reckon 1. Again, if you need any assistance whatsoever, just reach out to us or contact Zapier directly and we can help with the integration between the two products. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward. We've integrated with Shopify. I personally uh, have a Shopify account, or my, my wife does, and it was a pretty simple process to set up uh, Shopify into Reckon 1. Thank you. Can you give me an example of how Zapier might be useful with Google Sheets? Yes, so we actually had a customer who was in the beta for Zapier, and they had this exact use case. So for whatever reason, uh, all the leads that this customer acquired went into a Google Sheet for himself and also his team on the road. But then when they became an active account, you, they had to re-enter that data into Reckon 1. So what they do now is enter all their leads into Google Sheets, uh, for example. When they become an active account, they copy those over to another sheet within the, the main document. And whenever a new line hits that sheet, they are instantly sent to Reckon 1 to create a contact. Now you could use Google Sheets alternatively as the action because that example it's the trigger. So as an action you might want to record all of your receipts and invoices into Google Sheets so that you have the data there ready to manipulate using data filters etc uh, etc. Et so really the sky's the limit with Google Sheets. An Excel for example, Airtable is another one where you can actually just pull through the data you need and allow uh, the spreadsheet aspect to filter data and manipulate it as required. Okay, thank you, Jason. That seems to be the end of the, end of the questions, if you'd like to finish the webinar. Thanks, Victoria, and thank you, everyone, for your valuable time uh, sitting through uh, the webinar with us. Uh, just a reminder, if you do have any further questions, please feel free to email us at zapier at Reckon.com, that's Zapier at Reckon.com. Uh, we will be adding more templates to build out our template ecosystem once we see the, the popular sort of connections coming through from our end users and our advisors. 
and we're also adding new triggers and actions so we have quite a few to go uh, the next ones that are coming out are items so create an item in Reckon 1 or also update an item and that will go through to Zapier and we're also adding update contact so if you make an update uh, to a contact in Reckon 1 that will update uh, your connected app or vice versa so thank you again and thank you Victoria and we'll talk to you all soon